Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. My name's Eric and I'm glad you can make it because today we're gonna mix things up a little bit. I'm gonna share with you some behind the scenes projects that we've been working on and I think you're really gonna enjoy this, especially if you're into dry curing meats or you're new to dry curing meats. A couple weeks ago, a company by the name of First Build reached out to me and you may recognize the company First Build because they're the team that brought to us the Opal Nugget Ice Maker. This is an ice machine that produces that good, chewable, sonic ice. And coincidentally enough, about five years ago, I bought an Opal Ice Machine, made a short little video, and uh, featured it here on the channel. But I digress. The reason First Build reached out to me is because they're in the process of creating a dry curing cabinet for meat or an aging chamber for cheese. Uh, you could use it for either one that's easy to use and produces amazing results. And although they have the engineering know-how to create an absolutely classy unit, they needed a little bit of advice on the technical side of things of what it's like to produce really good charcuterie, really good cheese. And that's where I come in. And I am very excited to say that Two Guys in a Cooler is partnering up with First Build to help create a dry curing cheese aging cabinet for you, Cavern. And this is basically the beginning of an epic journey. So if you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button now and that notification bell so that you can get notified of all the updates as we move forward. But I'm gonna put a link in the description box below where you can actually sign up over at First Build and be the first to receive updates as they come online. So through this journey, you're gonna see this unit evolve from what it is now, which is basically a rough prototype version 1.0 into a fully functioning, dry curing, cheese aging cavern that'll allow you to produce dry cured meats or aged cheeses effortlessly. I've been told that they wanna get a prototype into our hands, and if that happens, you know we're gonna run it through the gauntlet with all sorts of tests so that we can help dial it in even better. Okay, so now that you know all that, let me tell you where we're at right now. The team over at First Build has been experimenting with a Cavern version 1.0, and they've been dry curing some meats over the last month. But because they weren't really sure as to what to look for, they sent me a video and asked if I could review their progress so far to determine how the chamber was acting. And so that's what we're gonna do right now. We're gonna take a look at the video that they sent me and uh, I'm gonna try to explain as best I can what I think is going on in their chamber as they make some preliminary tweaks. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at the video that they sent me and see what we're working with. Uh, so here's what we got so far. It's been in the chamber for about four weeks now. Um, so again, we don't really know what exactly we're looking for, but uh, we found somebody that does. We're partnering with Eric from Two Guys in a Cooler, and he's apparently some meat wizard. <laughs> he can figure out what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, just from a picture of us cutting it uh, and the cross section of it cut. So Eric, this is for you. All right, the cut of meat that they're using is the pork tenderloin. And this is a great cut of meat, especially for this experiment because it doesn't take very long and it's not very forgiving. So any problems that the chamber might have, they're gonna manifest in this slice and we're gonna be able to tell a lot about what's going on inside the chamber. All right, so looking at the meat, there's a couple things that stand out technique and chamber. I don't want to focus on technique today, but there are certain techniques that just right off the bat help you produce a better quality dry cured meat. What I do want to focus on is the chamber and this cut speaks to me. First and foremost, we've got a lot of good mold growth on the exterior of this dry cured meat. That means the conditions inside the cavern are optimal for growing mold or the right temperature, the right humidity, the right airflow, and then of course, fresh air exchange. Looking at this slice, I gotta tell you, I am incredibly impressed. I mean, they've never made dry cured meats before. 
not really knowing what they're doing using a chamber that's in the prototype status. So great job guys, first and foremost. And truth be told, this right here by most people's standards is acceptable charcuterie. And if you pay special attention to the color of the center cut, you're gonna notice that the outer edge is a little bit darker in color than the center. Dry ring is what happens when the exterior of your dry cured meats dries a little bit faster than the interior. And for the most part, it's not that big of a deal. It's completely edible. Uh, the only thing you'll really notice is maybe a texture difference between the interior and the exterior. The interior is gonna seem quite tender, a little soft, while the exterior is gonna seem a little chewy. If dry ring gets severe enough, it could turn into something called case hardening, and that is when an actual crust develops around your dry cured meats, preventing moisture from escaping from the middle. If that happens, the center of your meat will generally stay raw, it'll lead to spoilage, and you'll end up having to toss the entire thing away. But what we have here is just a slight case of dry ring, and in a chamber, dry ring can be caused by a couple things. Not enough humidity, or too much airflow. And you really have to have the perfect balance of humidity and airflow in a drying chamber in order to produce really great charcuterie. You know, where the muscle dries perfectly even. And if either one of those are out of balance, it's gonna create an environment where moisture will begin to evaporate a lot faster on your muscle, giving you that dry ring or worst case scenario, case hardening. Okay, so as we're looking at the slices here on the table, that dry ring starts to become a little more present. My guess is that there's an airflow issue. There's too much airflow in the chamber, which is creating this sort of environment that allows the moisture to be released from the surface a lot faster than it should. And my second uh, guess is humidity. We need to bump up that humidity just a little bit more so that they could dry a little bit slower and have that nice even drying. So let me show you what a pork tenderloin is supposed to look like when it's dried in a chamber that is perfectly dialed in. Notice that it's evenly dried from center to edge. There's no dry ring. It's incredibly tender. I mean, it pulls apart like a prosciutto or a culatello, and trust me when I tell you, super tasty. And that's our goal for Cavern. We want you to be able to produce rock star charcuterie effortlessly, no matter what your experience level is. And that's all I got for you today. So thanks a lot, First Build, for including me in this project. I cannot wait to see how the cavern evolves over the coming months. And if you guys have any suggestions, comments, or questions, leave them in the comment section below. I know that your feedback is gonna be invaluable. And don't forget to click the link in the description box below so that you can get the latest updates on cavern as it's being developed. It's gonna be a wild ride. I'm glad you're a part of it. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, give it a great big thumbs up. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye.